Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Session 1 Review, Conclusion and Homework presentation, Mary reviews and concludes the Understanding My Loving Self two-day session and gives some homework to the participants for the following break day. Recorded on the 5th of June, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. So it's 20 to 4, and I'll do my best to have us out of here by 20 past. See how we go, hey? Don't want to rush through this bit. So I'm going to be reviewing what we just heard the last couple of days and wrapping things up and then giving you some homework for your rest day tomorrow. So... Let's cast our minds back to yesterday morning. Feels like a bit of a long time ago, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Lots happened. <laughs> yeah. All right, who remembers in the very first thing that Jesus spoke to us about in the introduction? If you can see if you can remember. And what I want to remind you of, or what I want you to remind me of, was a couple of the reasons he said that this group was so important. Why we were having this group. Eloisa? Remember in our first group in this assistance group series, the Understanding My Will to Love, we learned that God is already doing everything that she can to have a relationship with us. And so it's up to us using our will to actually form that relationship with her. And, and then Jesus spoke about why Devel this group is so important in that process. Which is about developing my loving self. So doing my part to do this. Doing my part, yep. Can you be more specific? I do like basically to use my will to become loving and so that I can then have this relationship with God. Yeah. We talked about that a lot in the very first assistance group. Oh, okay. But in this, it's a bit of a stretch. It's a long time ago. Do you want, Anne, do you want to have a go? Remember he talked about the way that God communicates yes, with us. Specifically to look at where we are blocking God yes, by not feeling... Our feelings? Yes. It's all a feeling communication. Remember he drew this little diagram of how communication happens? We have feelings, don't we, that we, that we at the moment translate into thoughts. And sometimes we're so cut off from these feelings that even what we think we're feeling is not really accurate, is it? And then we, then we try to communicate with each other using language. Do you remember this? Yep. 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 But how does God communicate with us? Yeah. All through the feelings, isn't it? So feeling to feeling is how God wants it to happen, and not through another person, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. And so coming to this group and working through these issues of facade what we're telling ourselves that we're feeling and beginning to get down into this region of letting go of some of this fear and pain or understanding what we need to do in order to get to this fear and releasing this pain is the way, isn't it, that we're actually going... We're going to have to do all that, aren't we, before we can actually connect with our Creator, with God. <coughs> yep. Makes sense. So this group is all about... Right, connecting to some feelings and getting real about feelings, isn't it? Yes. And who, who, who's already feeling a bit shook up around feelings? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So that was our introduction. Jesus said a lot more things in the introduction, and we don't have time to go through all of them. But that was one of the key points, wasn't it, that he wanted us to know? Okay. Who remembers the name of the very first talk after the introduction, the first topic? Uh, Pete? Uh, the creation of our pain? Yes. <coughs> Who 
the creation of my pain. Okay. And what did we learn there? What is the source of our pain? Fabio? Or just... Sin? Sin, yes. And there was three types of sin, wasn't there? Yeah. Who remembers them? Anyone on this side? Luli? Um, rejecting a relationship with God. Oh, we're jumping ahead. Remember, this is the sources. This is the ground zero of where it all begins with Family pain. Family of origin. Yes. So our parents' sin, we can say. So the sin, uh, the way that our parents have sinned against us, the, the sin we've kind of taken on, absorbed like little sponges from our parents. If we go back to Kerry, just behind Lily there, yep. Sorry, the mic went all the way out there, yep. My sin. My personal sin, yes. And what was the third one? If you just go behind you to Sherry, yep. Uh, society sin. Society sin. Yep. So this is really where all the pain comes from. This is, this is the source. This sin, my own personal sin. So how I'm choosing to sin, how I'm choosing to hold on to sin. My parents sin. That's been a role in the creation of my pain. And society, the collective sin that I've grown up in, has been a part in creating my pain. Now, who remembers what is the largest source? What is the thing that contributes the most? If we go to Laura. <coughs> is it our own sin? Yep. It's our personal sin, the way that we are sinning. And often we want to say, it's our parents. <laughs> it's just their fault. It's all, it was so hard. Don't they know? It was really hard. This is why I'm in so much pain right now. So we want to say that the pain I experience day to day, the difficulties in relationships, the stuff I feel badly about, how I feel bad about myself, we want to say that that comes from our parents, or from the society, and we often look last at how we are sinning. Yeah, so that was an important point. So that's the sources of our pain, this where we're missing the mark, isn't it? Missing the mark of love in these three areas. Now, that's kind of a broad way of saying it. And do you remember we narrowed it down, really, to say there's kind of two ways that this, it's all fine to say, oh, it's sin, it's sin. But what are the two key things that then, because of this sin, exist within us and run our life and lead to the pain? Pete? It's our um, flawed view of love and truth. Yes. Yes, it is. And in fact, I want to call it, so this was the sources, and this is, so we talked first about the sources of pain, and then we said, I think we called it the creators of pain, which is what Peter's just talked to us about. Um, so you're saying, what did you say, Pete? The, oh, sorry, John. The, our flawed view of love and our flawed view of truth. Yes. So the flawed view of love, <coughs> which what did we call that? Who remembers? Just call it out. Evil, which is love literally turned backwards. It's the erroneous version of love that lives within us. So we don't really have a clue about love. We're just calling this other thing evil love. And that's directing all of our actions and, and it's actually creating so much pain. And the other thing was our flawed understanding of truth. And what's another thing we can call that? Fear. Fear. It's our false beliefs or our false expectations that are appearing real and are driving 
our actions, our perceptions, what happens. And we don't even realise that these two things, our erroneous viewpoint of what is loving and our false beliefs about truth, are actually leading to a lot of pain in our life. So that's good. What was the third major thing that Jesus talked about in that discussion? Does anyone remember? He said, so we've got all this, we've taken on all this sin and we've got these false definitions now of love and truth, Catherine. Creation. Just, no, <laughs> sorry, I threw everyone off by saying they could yell at one thing. Yeah. Uh, creation of our facade. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not right. yet. This is still in the talk about the creation of our pain. We talked, if we come to Wayne. The different types of pain. Yes. And what were a couple of them, Wayne, that really kind of... Rejecting God. Rejecting God. Mm. And we talked about how that was like one of the biggest things, wasn't it? One of the biggest things that was creating pain and yet most of us think it's not even a big deal. It's like an optional extra. And um, <laughs> if, we, if we dealt with all the other stuff, everything would be all right and then we could maybe decide if God, we want God or not. It's like a, a friend that maybe you want, maybe you don't and it's not really impacting you not having them in your life. And do you remember that we talked about or we mentioned in your outline that it's the, this rejection of God is like an unforgivable sin? And that's a bit confronting, isn't it, that concept? But we mean it in a very literal sense, in that God gives forgiveness. God has grace and mercy. And if we are rejecting God, then we can't actually receive that substance into us. So it's literally sort of unforgivable. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a judgment. It's a literal thing. Yeah, yeah. So we talked about the rejection of God, didn't we? Um, and can anyone give me just a couple of others that were really powerful for them? Lainey? And then we'll move on. Superiority and inferiority? Yes. That's a great one to, to end on because this is something that we are really keen on seeing where we feel inferior to others, <coughs> but it's more difficult often, isn't it, to recognise where we are feeling superior. Because when we feel superior, we feel entitled. That's inherent in the, in the emotion. So we feel entitled to this viewpoint. And actually, when it comes to confronting that feeling of superiority, we often feel like someone's like putting us down. Because we thought this is totally normal. I should have this. And now someone's saying, I can't. Wow, that's a lot of pain. So holding on to these kind of beliefs about superiority and inferiority came from, or well they come from, our parents' sin, our society's sin and our personal sin. And letting go of, that's perpetuating pain in our life and it's part of understanding how pain is created. Because as we hold on to them, it creates more pain. Okay, so that was our first group in a nutshell, our first session. So is everyone okay with all that? All right, now let's get on to that second group. Catherine, do you want to tell us what the second session was about? Creation of my facade. Yes. Okay. So this was the second thing Jesus talked about. And would you agree in the first talk, it was all a bit sort of clinical, wasn't it? It was sort of like, okay, there's some theory, I can see the logic in all of that. And then we got on to the creation of my facade. And he shared at the beginning of the talk something really powerful and impactful about how our facade is created. The primary way. Christiana, what was that? That we actually chose to create our facade and in the choosing of creating our facade, we can also deconstruct it. Actually, that wasn't the first thing that he shared. Oh. 
And it's actually not, it's not 100% true because something happened before we started making choices. Rachel? That it's learned. Yes, and what we were taught, we were taught to fear our pain, weren't we? This happened in childhood. We were taught to feel our pain, fear our pain. Does everyone remember that now, how we spoke about that? And this is where we can start to begin to cultivate some compassion for ourselves, can't we? Because this is something we learned. We were taught this is a good thing, fear the pain. So we were taught to fear... And that happened when we were really little. Does anyone remember some of the ways that it happened? I might be asking you to stretch your uh, Canaan, is it? Yep. So how were we taught to fear this pain when we were ch children? Um, oh, we created it so that we uh, could survive it. Um. That's what we did with the facade. Yeah. And it's true that when we were taught to fear the pain, that was the beginning of the creation of our facade. But let me just revise with you a, little, a couple of things that Jesus said about how we are taught to fear our pain. So let me just put taught to fear pain here. Oh, okay. So we're taught the fear of our pain when we're a child. And remember he said that you are incarnating into someone who has already been taught to fear their own pain. They've already been told and taught and grown up feeling like fear, feeling pain is a terrible thing. So you come into the world, into someone, and you start absorbing that. And does anyone remember what else happens? Sheridan, just wait for the mic here. Yeah. Not sure if this is right, but how we start because we're feeling, we feel our parents' distress when we do feel. Yes, there's a thing that happens that's to do with reward and punishment. Yes, so when we don't feel, um, we get approval or love, yep. or and yep. then when we do feel, the opposite. Yes, so we there's certain emotions that our parents feel it's okay to feel and you get rewarded for feeling them. And there's certain emotions that our parents feel that it's, you can never feel them. And so there's punishment or withdrawal of love or all of these things that happen. And we learn, oh, I've got to, feel, I've got to not feel those things. So one, we have the example of our parents not feeling their own pain and fearing their own pain. And two, there's a reward and punishment thing that starts to happen. If you're a happy girl, you get lollies. If you're unhappy, sit in the corner. It, you know, and we're taught, so we, we're not only fearing our pain as an experience, we realise, gee whiz, when I feel pain very often, or when I feel a certain type of emotion, there is more pain inflicted on me. And so the, the fear cycle goes on, doesn't it? So we grow up and this is where Jesus said that at times there's certain emotions with the where we feel okay and some we feel confused about and some we feel we can never go there. But basically it's all this general feeling that we must fear our pain is the establishing of this global terror and boom, we start into a facade. This is how the faca facade starts being created. Now, what happens after that? Because that's when our will is not very developed. All of this happens in our early years when our will is not very developed. But as we learned in our first assistance group, as we grow up, our will is being developed. We are starting to become more responsible for it. And how does this facade that we created when we learn to fear pain get perpetuated? If we just go at the back, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. Patricia, I thought so. Yeah. Um, our, our parents, oh, our parents imposed upon upon the child, and there was bribery, distraction, and violence. Even yes, so that's what we just spoke about. But now I'm saying there's a point where it's not our parents anymore. 
What happens? How come you and I still have a facade right now, even though we don't live with our parents? Sup suppression and conformity. No. Let's go to someone else. Uh, Miranda? No, no, no. Wait for the mic. <laughs> yes. Deny, minimise, justify all that? No. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer because otherwise we'll... Uh, it's, isn't it interesting how we forget this one? This one's quite important. It is we choose. We choose to... St we choose to hold on to that fear of pain. We make choices. And, and remember Graham talked about in the Q&A about how, gosh, we made that choice. And then it's like we just keep making choices and this whole big thing, this, all the stuff in our facade and our addictions and all these denial techniques and avoidance, it all gets bigger than Ben-Hur. Because we are still choosing to not deal with that fear, to not, to not challenge the false beliefs in that, that global terror of, of our emotion, of being emotionally overwhelmed. And so we as adults are perpetuating and we have been a part in the creation of our own facade. So that's an important point to remember, isn't it? So while we have to, or while we don't have to, but it's really great to start to have compassion for how the seeds of this facade started, which is stuff that we didn't have any control over, and our parents who had parents before them, who had parents before, all along down this chain, everyone was fearing their pain. And so we kind of arrived at this soup that we didn't have much control over of everyone fearing pain. So we made a facade to survive. But then, as we grew, we took part in that. Yeah. So that's how our facade is created and continually created. And we've discussed a bit about that. You guys have discussed a bit about that today. Now, in that creation, Miranda just mentioned some of the techniques we use to perpetuate it, to keep it going, to keep it flourishing. And they were some of those things. So uh, justifying denying, judging, judging ourselves, judging others, minimising, ignoring, denying, blaming, yeah, lots, hey, intimidating. We're at, our facade can be pretty um, lots of things. Can be pretty unpleasant to uh, interact with, can it? All of that stuff going on. Whew. <laughs> yeah. But there are a lot of those things that you're calling out there are the techniques that we use in the creation of this facade and really in perpetuating it. That's how we keep this whole big, it's like a big, I think of it like a big factory, you know, above this global terror, there's like all these workings, there's, you know, what do you call it, um, conveyor belts, there's production lines, you know, the whole thing is like an entity in and of itself. Oh, if we go down this road, we'll use a bit of anger, turn it back around, okay, back to suppression. Now, oh, get some comfort. Oh, yeah, there's no problems here. When things get really shook up, just deny anything ever happened. You know, there's, there's all these little uh, picker paths that you can go down and it is all there to help us stay away from this global terror. Which brings us probably to our third discussion. So everyone's okay on that one, the creation of our facade. That's a little refresher. Yep, feeling back in the zone of that one. They were the key points that Jesus wanted us to take, take home. Now, what was our third talk? Accepting my facade. Oh, before we go on to this one, if you just cast your mind back to yesterday afternoon, after that discussion about the creation of your facade, can you remember how everyone was feeling? <laughs> it was really interesting, wasn't it? Remember Jesus made comment. He said, 
And wow, it feels lighter. There was more energy. Everyone was a bit more present and a bit more, oh, okay, here we go. Gus got down to business there, didn't we? <laughs> like, and, and in a way, as I was listening to him, I was feeling like, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? In this big factory and conveyor belts and the whole big thing, and we can get lost in ourselves, can't we? we like, oh, is this an addiction? Or should I say that about my mum? Or like, oh, I don't know. Whatever. And all this stuff, and I'm just not getting anywhere, and maybe it's because of... And yet, what he said is sort of a leveller, isn't it? It's like, everyone, you're afraid. You're afraid of being emotionally overwhelmed. And that's a terror that everyone has to some degree or another. This terror of just being overwhelmed by emotion and just being yourself, you know, which is a very emotional being. Everyone's got it. And in a way, that was, I almost felt sitting in the audience, it, it had kind of two effects. One was like, yeah, wow, that's pretty simple. That's kind of like the magic of truth, you know, you just go, it's not magic really, but it feels like, wow, yeah, okay, I get it. We've got to work through that, otherwise d trying to deal with all the pain and all the causal stuff, well, that's why I keep running into trouble because I haven't let go of this, this overriding terror of it all just like flooding over me and me having no control of it. So in a way, like, phew-wee, okay. So that, everyone was a bit up. But then at the same time, it was like, <sighs> oh, that's challenging, isn't it? Like, the terror. Well, some of us have, like, run into it occasionally, <laughs> elbowed it in the side and gone, whoa, that's pretty intense. And, and, you know, some of you were brave and said, like, yeah, I just don't want to do that. I've structured my life in not doing that, like, that's really scary, thinking about doing that. So it had this effect, didn't it, of stirring us all up. Okay, now we know what the deal is. Let's go stewing that. <laughs> and personally, I love that. I, because when I feel that my, for myself, and when I feel that for you guys, I'm like, yeah, this is where change can happen. This is where things are stirred up. Even the facade's a little bit challenged here, isn't it? You know, we're getting down to some real, some real stuff. So that was lovely to feel that, even though I know some of you didn't feel very lovely about, about the truth. Um, sometimes it's like that. The error wants to fight for itself, you know. Anyway, let's get on to our third talk. Did I ask someone what it was? You told me. Accepting. So this is now this morning. Oop, sorry about my... <laughs> Jesus makes it look so simple, doesn't it? Relaxed. <laughs> okay, accepting my facade. Now, this is another... I don't know if you can cast your mind back to this morning. Jesus said there was two primary purposes of our facade, primary roles, things it wanted to do. Laura? Reasons for its very existence. So um, to desensitise our pain and to avoid our terror. Yes. And, and yesterday and today he's been introducing to you slowly this concept that basically, and I, this is how I think of it, like... The pain, it's not really evil, but it is kind of a dictator. <laughs> this, this is, it, to me, it feels more like the fear. The fear of the pain says, I'm not having any of this. We've got to do a whole other thing because my belief, the fear's belief is, I cannot feel this pain. I can't do it. That's the fear screaming its false, its false falsity, its untruth at you. I can't feel pain. No way. So we've got to do something else. We've got to get away from ourselves. We've got to control our environment. We've got to manipulate things. We've got to stay, like, away <laughs> from what we call this drama. And tomorrow you're going to learn some awesome things about how messed up that is, how untrue that is, how much we think that is a drama when this is a bigger drama. 
But anyway, um, so now I lost my track. The, the facade is there because this, this dictator, it, it's a tyrant. That's what it feels like to me. It's the tyrant that's been running your life and saying, you cannot get more real here. You can't cope with that fear. You can't cope with that pain. No way. Don't go there. Build a facade and make it super powered with lots of different conveyor belts and lots of different strategies. And the older you get, the more you might find. And yep, that's good. Just keep doing it. <laughs> and the facade, it doesn't have a brain of its own. It's like, okay, you're scary. I'll do it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, bro, you're right. Yeah. Bro, okay. What do you want me to be happy now? Okay. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. No, I'm not afraid. And this, this was like me when I met Jesus again in this life. You know, I was so much in facade and so detuned from myself that I didn't think I had that much fear, you know. And I was doing all right and I was a pretty nice person. Yeah, I had my issues, but I was nice, you know. I was doing a good thing. In fact, I was a bit arrogant in some areas. I was doing more than the average person in some things, you know. I had my arrogance going on as well. And the more that I've worked, and you got, a lot of you guys have known me a long time, and you know I've been working on this a long time, and I have, and I have put my heart into it, but sometimes I haven't been that dedicated, <laughs> and things have gone really bad then. <laughs> but I have been <coughs> focusing my attention on this now for some years, some seven years really, yeah. And it takes time, it really does, you know. And the more I've done it, the more sensitive I've gotten to this. And it's only rec like really recently where I wake up and I go, oh, that feeling I used to wake up with, that I covered with a compulsion, for a while before I met Jesus to have a cup of coffee or just, you know, to get up even do some exercise or to, to leap out of bed and just or read a book or do whatever it was in my mornings. Now I'm like, yeah, wow. That's because there's dread. And all his years of talking about how he woke up in dread, I'd be like, yeah, bummer for you, hey? <laughs> <laughs> That must have been really hard, you know. <laughs> lucky me. I didn't say lucky me, but, you know, I was like, yeah, you poor thing. And now who's the one who wakes up and goes, yeah, this feeling in my guts, that's dread. And this is what I'm saying to you is that it takes some sincerity in doing this stuff and some patience and you've got to be in it for a bit. And then you start to get closer to this, to this stuff. And while that's not always comfortable, I can tell you that there are rewards already in that you, you feel more real. Because the, this is more real, this global terror is more real than all this other palaver that you've been doing. Does that make sense? This is all just denial of anything real. Yeah. Yeah. So... Getting to this place and getting to understand, to, to really understand the, the fear that's in you does take some work here and that's why we're talking to you guys about it. And, and what was the biggest thing? Jesus said that accepting our facade, and I've kind of gone a bit tangential here, haven't I? But accepting our facade was about avoiding, desensitising to this pain and avoiding this terror. And what was the biggest thing that he really emphasised to you guys about how the attitude you're going to need to have in accepting your facade? Does anyone remember, Lorleen? To have compassion. Yes, absolutely. This compassion, and it's just, you, you can't... Like, honestly, and Eloisa laughed at me the other day because I was talking to her on the phone and we were talking about some injury I had and I was like, yeah, and there it is, Elo. There it is in full display, you know. I just did that thing and there's my stuff. And she cracked up. She's like, wow, like, you're not even judging that right now. And because that's, that wasn't old Mary. 
okay, I had a lot of judgment and a lot of lack of compassion for myself and it, it doesn't get you anywhere. And as Jesus started to touch on with you guys in the um, feedback this afternoon, you know, with some of you, it's a learned thing where you're trying to pull yourself into line and it's not going to work. You can't get rid of this stuff if you're just continually beating yourself up for having it. So developing this compassion, cultivating this compassion and having this compassionate sort of attitude with yourself, which is not, as he said, letting yourself off the hook, but it's saying, look, it's there and I'm actually not going to justify it just going to know that it's there and it got there through a series of things that I was previously pretty unaware of. And now that I'm aware, I'm just going to do my best to work through it. And having that compassion is like the most crucial ingredient, really, in your progression. Yeah. And that was lovely to see some of you guys connecting to that <laughs> truth and starting to feel kind of that difference in how you've been treating yourself to how really God feels about your facade, which is not as bad as you feel, about, most of you feel about your facade. Yeah. Okay. So that was, that's the crux of really what he wanted you to get from that talk, and both of us did. Who remembers the two points, the two, po or who remembers the first point that he, remember then we moved on to feedback. So is everyone right with accepting my facade? Is there anything else to add there or anything else? Yep. Okay, so let's just do a really quick revision. I've still got like, yep, a few minutes. Quick revision of the feedback, just because he raised, remember at the beginning he talked about how he wasn't going to give personal feedback, but then he raised two points at the end for everyone to have a think about it. And I just want to raise them with you for your day off so you can have a think about them. Uh, Sandra? The denial, the yes. huge denial that we have, and also not wanting to listen to other people's feedback as our own because we're in denial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like um, I was thinking about, you know, air traffic controllers managing all this. Uh, it's like where air traffic, no, that one can go over there, that one can go over there. It's got nothing to do with me as he was talking about everything going over our head. So, yes, this desire to remain in denial, he talked about that, didn't he, and how detrimental that is for our own progression. And how many of you are still in that state when it comes to your facade? So you're saying, look, most of this stuff doesn't really exist. There might be a eeny weeny bit here, is maybe some of you are willing to say, but you're not willing to see like, nope, well, I've really, I've done some work here in this facade area in the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years of my life, and uh, this might take a bit of deconstructing. Yeah. So most of us are denying things. And as, as Sandra pointed out, when other feedback is given to other people, we don't think, hmm, does that apply to me? Or how does that apply to me? How do I feel about what's being said? And, and developing this sensitivity to yourself. Remember he emphasised, like, it's not just a matter of, like, carte blanche going, well, he said it to Jules, so Dennis must apply exactly the same thing to himself. He didn't say that, did he? He said, no, look, guys, you have to take responsibility, get a bit more sensitive to yourself and what your real responses are, and then start to think, have some discernment, what applies to me without just throwing it out, out of hand. Yeah. Is that clear? Got that one? Okay. What was the second major thing, Yvonne? That accepting the facade is the hardest thing yes. you'll ever have to do. Yes. And it's going to be emotional. Yeah. And you know what? I know that feels like for some of you like, yeah, accepting my facade is like the hardest thing I'm ever going to have to do. Man, that's hard. But you, when I hear that, I think, well, good. 
this is really hard. This is as hard as it's going to get. That's good. It gets easier after this. Awesome. Because, <laughs> you know, I've done a bit of hard here. <laughs> if it's going to get easier, that's really good. You know, I just have to hang in there for this bit. And remember, he said it's hard because there's not immediate sort of rewards. You don't, you don't work through one addiction and suddenly have a relationship with God. You've got to keep working on the false beliefs. The, the way the parents sin, my own sin, the ways that the lying, the justifying, the minimising, all that stuff, I've got to keep looking at that stuff. I've got to keep working on that stuff, keep powering into that stuff and reminding myself of the four tools. And we didn't get to talk very much about the four tools, did we? Although it came up a few times. And the four tools can help, the four tools you learnt in the first group, so they were, and you can call them out, faith, faith truth, truth, action and emotion. Yeah. So being humble, taking love action on your desires, taking action where you know that there's untruth, finding truth, seeking truth, challenging error within yourself and Remember, Justin asked a really good question in the q and I think it was yesterday. What is the most important of those tools when it comes to dealing with my facade, accepting my facade? Faith. Faith. So everything you can do to work on this quality of faith is going to help you so much in this, in this process where it feels, as Yvonne said, this is the hardest bit. This is where I just feel like, man, there's more. I've got to keep going and really you also what I found for myself is that you have to you, you really do have to develop a love for those four tools so every time you take action which you know is not based in fear but based in your desire to get out of fear you think okay I just grew a muscle there that was good I have some compassion for myself if it didn't go perfectly you know lots of times I've gotten up here and gone Oh yeah, that didn't go perfectly. <laughs> um, but I knew, well, look, I'm not going to be perfect overnight and I really, really love this truth. I want to teach it. So I just took a step, growing a muscle. I've got to grow it some more. It's still weeny. I'll keep growing. And the more I do that, then okay, I have compassion for myself in that process. And the same goes in the other areas where, when it comes to feeling emotion and being humble, when it comes to um, seeking truth. And like I, truth, sometimes I've tried to squash my love of truth because I'm like, man, just give up, Mary. Like, stop loving this truth so much because you just keep asking for more and then it gets more challenging, <laughs> you know. But in a way, I've come to, I'm coming to love that about myself. You know, that continually seeking truth and not being able to let it go. It's actually that one asset that I think has gotten me as far as I have because faith, like for a lot of you guys, has been a difficult thing for me to develop because it does require, you know, feeling as you go through those three other tools and, and reminding yourself of truth, noticing when things happen, giving up my addiction to cynicism, which I have like, like Graham, you know, giving up that, that narrow, dark world view and actually seeing, no, that's just my view. It isn't the whole truth of what's happening here. Yeah. So this, this area of working through your facade is the, this is a time when most people get the most challenged and they want to leave. They want to leave. So it's the hardest part. All right. Okay. Is there anything else from the feedback? I'm actually, I think I've got five minutes to go through homework with you guys and then we can finish. All right. Okay. So, homework, this is in your, it's in your outlines obviously, so if you've got a printer out. Um, but I'll just read through it and see if you have any questions about the particular activities because then you can ask them and you'll have some clarity for your day. So this is just things for you to have a look at for yourself tomorrow and then on Tuesday morning um, I'll be up here again and we'll do a quick review of what we just reviewed just so it still stays fresh. I love doing the reviews because I think, you know, 
it can be really like a lot goes on and and sometimes you can like to even me this afternoon I was like man was that only yesterday it feels like so much happened we've been on a whole adventure together um, and it's good to remind you know, have it because it's all stuff that we build on all throughout the week okay so let's look at our homework so these are some questions for you to ask ask yourself an answer for yourself in your journal what lies do I tell myself about myself So, for example, well, I, was, I was good at this one. I'm really a good person at heart. You know, how true is that really if I assess my actions? And, you know, have a, have a really try to be honest with yourself about what, remember in the first group Jesus talked about the evidence in your life as opposed to what you're telling yourself about yourself. Okay, second question. What lies do I tell myself about fear and pain? How do I believe that my facade protects me from fear and pain? That's a good question. It's a good juicy question, that one. What are my personal techniques for preventing the emotional emotion of fear? And that's another good one to have a think about in a few different contexts. So um, some of you might be like, yeah, when I'm afraid, I run away. But remember, the, uh, remember Jesus did that adorable thing where he was talking about when someone pokes your fear? Because sometimes we run away when we feel in control of the situation. Yeah, I'll just exit. But what about when you, you know, you're feeling like, oh, social rules say I can't just exit right now or um, I'm married to this person so I can't really <laughs> exit <laughs> as much as I'd like to. And they poke your fear. What happens then? Or what happens when you, it, like in all different scenarios and all different, like if it's a fear of being physically hurt, it's a fear of being embarrassed, if it's a fear of looking like, oh, I don't know the answer, what, how, what are the techniques I use to stay away from that feeling? Because you'll find that we have more techniques than we think. Okay. Um, what do I feel like doing when I confront the truth about myself? This is another powerful one. <laughs> Miranda, I just saw Miranda. Eat, eat, eat. Me too sometimes. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, but re not only physically. Physically is good to have a look at, but emotionally as well. Some of us want to blame. We want to go, well, that's my parents' sin. They did that. They, you know, they were instrumental in creating this facade. And until they change, I'm not doing a thing. And I'm going to call them, actually. Tell them some truth. You know? <laughs> and some of us just want to kick ourselves, don't we? You know, like, oh, you're an idiot. Oh, I'm just going to punish you out of having this. Going to punish you out of having that injury. I won't have any compassion for, for myself for how it got there. I won't, I won't do it, take any steps, like using my four tools about how I could actually get rid of it. I'm just going to punish myself and hope that if I beat up on myself enough, things will change doesn't work I tried okay so Anna can I ask a question about the first question definitely so um, what lies do I tell about myself we're kind of looking at what what in like what kind of things we do in our facade to, to hide our feelings that we really have about ourselves we're more remember in the now just remember which group which remember in the state of our facade this this in the accepting my facade the other the last presentation Jesus gave he talked about the things that we do in our facade so we do a lot of things like we tell ourselves our facade is really good and we, we our, our facade says to us, I don't have any terror, I'm fine. Or, or I, really, like I did that for a good and loving reason, not a selfish reason. So really we're looking at some of those things, the things you tell yourself yeah. about yourself to help you stay away from fear and pain or shame gotcha. or got, 
Got me? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Is that clear for everyone else? Yeah, and if you need um, a bit of help in accepting in the talk, accepting my facade, there's a whole section on the state of my facade, which Jesus went through some of those things with you. But really, it was talking about it, the facade. Basically, it wants to believe it's a good thing. It wants to believe it's an asset to your life. It's the best thing about you. It's the it's the thing that gets you through. It's the thing. If you didn't have it, well, everything would be you know non-functioning and so it tells you it tells you tell yourself in your facade you tell yourself a lot of lies a lot of lies about yourself and also the other thing the facade what it does is it keeps us away from reality doesn't it from the truth about what we really feel about things about love about the way the world really works about what really happened in in situations so it tells a lot of lies about that stuff and it tells us a lot of lies about our sin it says we're not sinning when we are it says oh no you don't mean to sin when you really do you know it makes a lot of excuses so these kinds of things what are you telling yourself about yourself and about your character and about your nature and about your motivations sound all right okay so I suppose to wrap up, it's 4.30, guys. Um, I made it. I'll just wrap up quickly. Um, really, we're saying in this first session that you've just completed that in order to develop our loving self, we first have to do some basic groundwork that can feel challenging and it is about understanding how our pain was created the mechanisms through which it was created, absorbing sin from outside of ourselves, maintaining sin, choosing not to deal with sin from within ourselves, and that leading to having all these fears and false beliefs and erroneous versions of love. So we need to understand that process, and then we need to understand that having fear of that pain, believing that that fear is not, that we're terrified and we can't deal with it, is how our facade is created. That's, that's how our facade becomes, comes into being. And the very first step in reversing all of that is coming to accept that that process has happened. Accept that we now have a facade and have compassion for the fact that it covers a lot of pain And that we were taught to fear it and we've chosen not to deal with that fear. So they're the key lessons from this first session. And really they're big steps to coming to accept that this, this exists. Um, so, you know, you can feel like compassionate towards yourself about the fact that it's happened. And you can also feel good if you're starting to grow, have an aspiration develop this aspiration to accept that facade. Hmm. Okay. All right. See you in a day, hey? Thank you, guys.